Saudi Arabia and Iran as applicants to BRICS plus want to push the world towards a pegged currency because that is the only way they would be having savings in a currency which can be used after their crude oil stock is over. Right. So in order to diversify their economy, they have to come together, which is why I predicted that both these nations would be prompted by Russia, India, China format to mend their ties and move forward for diversifying the economy out of the crude oil business, which is why I say that, you know, the West is going to have very, very tough time in terms of supplies. Well, that what sounds really good. I mean, it makes the world a much safer place then if there's less tension and strife in the Middle East, because that's a bit of a tinderbox at the moment, isn't it? Yeah. So post-1971, we have seen that what I call as the two buckets theory, wherein uh, the Western alliance, the collective West, which we call it, would prompt healthy economic countries in Asia and Gulf that, look, you have got a rogue neighbor and we are going to sanction and punish that rogue neighbor. And in exchange of that, you will have to continue with the US dollar. So this two bucket theory is now unraveling and reversing, which is why we are seeing this de-dollarization process. So you imagine once Saudi Arabia and Iran mend ties, even to a decent level of understanding, there is no more role for the global policing that the West as a collective used to do. Similarly, Japan, Iraq, and Russia have launched a joint project, something unheard. Japan, as an US ally, doing a joint project with Russia. Similarly, Japan and China shifting a chunk of their bilateral trade into bilateral currencies. So all the two bucket theory uh, plans are now reversing, which is, which is why the de-dollarization is going to be in full speed. Mm-hmm.